Alright, so hi everyone. A little while ago, we did this video, 14 more node and art tips for Blender 3.1. And I shared in this video a method of using the edge angle node to basically get kind of curvature data for geometry nodes. So you'd be able to tell where to put like dirt buildup effects in like kind of inner curved areas. But it was a bit limited in the fact that you would only get angle data and it really wasn't enough, especially not when compared to like the shader editor nodes when using ambient occlusion, which is what I'm using for like a lot of my other procedural effects, a lot of my metal stuff, my grunge stuff, etc. So I always really wanted a way of getting ambient occlusion data inside of geometry nodes. And I know that a lot of other people have wanted that as well. Maybe not on YouTube, but like on Twitter and other places in the community. But recently I found out there is a way to do it, but it's just not procedural. So the way you do it, just to kind of give it to you right away, is if you take your object here, let's, um, well, we'll give it a geometry nodes modifier now, but we'll just make sure they're disabled in the viewport there because it's gonna disrupt the baking process. Then if we go down to the object data properties, and if you make a vertex color layer or group, I tend to call them groups, but it gets a bit confusing because it's a group of data, right? And so is the weight groups. So when I say weight, I'm referring to these vertex groups here. And when I say color, I'm referring to the vertex colors. Even though the vertex color is just going to be a black and white result and the weight's actually going to be the colored result anyway, it's confusing, just follow along. Um, so we make a vertex color layer and I'm going to name this one ambient occlusion. Okay, now we're gonna go up to the render properties and we're gonna make sure that cycles is selected because we're gonna do some baking. Then if we go down to the bake section here, the, the drop down, yours may be higher up in the chain here. It doesn't really matter. You wanna make sure the bake type is set to ambient occlusion. There's all sorts of other things you could bake out here, but we're gonna go with the AO. And then under output, you wanna set the target to vertex colors because you may or may not know that you don't just have to bake to texture maps in Blender. You can bake to vertex colors as well. So if you do that, then press bake. There's going to be a loading bar at the bottom. When it's done, you'll see nothing happens, but that's okay because we're in the wrong mode. At the top, if you then go down to the vertex paint mode, which is going to be redundant eventually when the new paint mode comes in, then you'll see that the object darkens. And that's because we have the ambient occlusion bake here. Although you may notice some artifacts, but that's okay. You can kind of just paint those out. Um, so the thing about the detail level of color layers like this is that they're based directly on the geometry density of the object. So the data is attached to the different polygons. So depending on how many polygons you have on your mesh, that's basically going to dictate the resolution, if you want to think about it that way, of the vertex color layer we've created, which means that for flat surfaces like this part of the cube here, you need to have like a fair number of faces to get like some pretty good data. Anyway, upon doing that bake, you could stop here technically and just use that as your ambient occlusion input, but that's not where we're gonna stop. So I'm gonna show you how to use this directly and then I'm gonna show you how to turn it into a weight group as well. So the way you'd actually use this as an input now is first of all, if I make a, uh, we'll do a quick setup here. So distribute points on faces, set point radius and a join geometry. Let me just set these up. So plugging that into the distribute and to the join geometry points there as well. And we'll put the radius in between and set that down to something like 0 0.01. And then we're going to take the join geometry output and there we go. And then let's just re-enable these in the modifier stack. Okay, so this setup here is literally just distributing points around the mesh. And we're going to use a lot of points because I'm going to restrict them to the ambient occlusion color layer that we've just created. The way we bring this in is by taking this kind of small circle thing here and by connecting it to another value. But you need to be careful here because if you connect it to the wrong value, then you're going to get the wrong data type and that's going to cause a problem. So I'm going to make a math node and I'm going to plug that circle into the value here. So we now have a new float value and you can tell it's a float because if you hover over the icon, it will say in brackets there. Likewise, this green one here is a geometry value. And if we made one for the selection over here, you'd see this one is a Boolean value, but we want a nice float value. Now that we've made it, if we go over to the modifier stack properties and press this button here, it's going to turn this input into an attribute. So if we do that, we can now click on this and then select some data which is attached to the object. So in this case, we have our face corner ambient occlusion color. So basically the color layer that we've created for this object is of a type called face corner. If we select that now, that's basically going to pass that color data. So like the brighter and the darker pixels that we've just baked down through this and into the math node. And then if I set this to less than and then plug that into our selection, then you'll start to see something happen on the mesh. If I hold shift while scrubbing the threshold value, you'll see the points are now attached to the darker areas of that color layer. And this is essentially an ambient occlusion mask. So without needing to use any of that edge data stuff, any ray casting or whatever, we now 
now know exactly where we can place our dirt buildup effects inside of a geometry nodes tree. But like I said, the only problem is it's not procedural. So it's pre-baked. Now you can re-bake that out. Like if you change your scene or if you change the position of the object, you can re-bake that and then it will update the color layer there and then that will re-feed in the new input data. But here's the thing, color layers are a little bit limited. There are a lot of artistic procedures which use like weight groups. And also it's a different and I think maybe more useful data type which they consider point for geometry nodes as well. So I wanted to find a way to convert the vertex colors into weight groups. So I did some research through the internet because I wasn't too sure what kind of procedure I'd need to do and I found doo -doo -doo -doo, some examples by Varken Varken on GitHub they have a repository called Blender add-ons where they've got like a collection of different like use cases workflow tools etc written in Python and down here two years ago weight over vertex color.py so I had to read through this found the vertex color to weight class that's exactly what we want had a look in the execute function here and saw the general process for the loop so in the process of converting one like list of, of a data type to another list you need to cycle through each index have a look at the data, then basically convert it in a line while also appending it to the other list. I say appending, well technically it's just placing it at like an appropriate index. But anyway, that doesn't really matter so much. This is the code, so I took a slice from this and then put it inside of a script here. All it does is it gets the active object, makes a vertex color group, and then initiates a bake just as we already did. Then it makes a weight group and then begins that procedure of conversion. So basically, if I get rid of this now, and if I hide our geometry nodes tree again, if we have a look in the object data properties down here, while I have the object selected, if I run the script by hovering over it and pressing Alt and P, or by going to text and then run script, it's going to generate both of these masks for us. So we now have the vertex color layer, which is exactly what we saw before, if I go to the vertex paint mode. But now we also have an ambient occlusion vertex group or a weight group. I'm actually going to rename that and put group at the end. So the geometry nodes attribute input doesn't get confused when they're both called the same thing. So with that selected, we can actually go to the weight paint mode and here we go. You can see the obvious result. So now that ambient occlusion data has been turned into a weight group and we can now paint over it and change the values. So you still have like manual painting control. And I should just point out that I have the brush set to subtract for this weight group because it's kind of doing like the inverse of what you might expect. Well, it depends on how you think about masking. Like are you painting on areas you do want stuff to appear or you don't? This goes back to our inverse masking discussion in the paint mode video. It's not really relevant for here. So anyway, yes, we now have a weight group with the ambient occlusion. And if we turn our geometry nodes tree back on, we can select this and get pretty much the same effect. Although the range of the values will be slightly different. So if I put this down to something low, you can see that as I go back to the color mode, there's more points. And if I go back to the weight group, there's fewer points. That's the only real difference between them. So I just thought that it would be important to find a way to get both of these in the same procedure so that you'd have the choice of what data type you'd want to use in your geometry nodes tree. So that's a general procedure. And this file, by the way, is available on my Patreon for second tier members and above if you can't be bothered to set this up for yourself. But that's not where I stopped with my experimenting. I felt like doing some development work recently, so I went back to Bygen, my personal add-on for like generative modeling stuff by gen represent and um <laughs> I thought it'd be fun to make a new kind of like grungy mode for like a potential content pack or maybe even ambient grunge or something like that. I just wanted to see if it would work. So I've got like a dirt and grunge content pack here and a physical grunge effect. So this basically automates that entire process. So if I cleared off all of the geometry nodes and stuff with the object selected, I can apply this effect. And if we wait, it will generate. And here we go. So if I go into the rendered view, we now have muck and mud and dirt. So it's using these ambient occlusion masks, like I've just showed you how to create but if I put this less than value to like 0.8 for example it's going to come out even more so we now have this procedural physical control over these dirt and grunge buildup effects based on an ambient occlusion mask yet inside of geometry nodes without using the edge angle node or ray casting or anything like that. So I just thought that you might find this tip useful and hopefully it gives you something to work from as well. But again, it's not procedural. That's the only downside. And maybe they will add something like a regular ambient occlusion node like we have in the shader editor eventually. I don't know how challenging that will be though for like real time control, especially since this bake was dependent on cycles. I haven't actually tried to see if the bake works with the EV rendering engine active, but from the looks of it, I don't even think we can bake with that active. So so yeah, that may be a problem because obviously geometry is like kind of unanimous across all the rendering engines, but baking is not. So I don't know. I just thought I'd show you this workaround, but why not test it on a more complex scene? So calling back to that node tips video, 
I've got the same statue here. I believe this is the Walters Family Grave one by Katie Wolf. A statue I use in so many of my videos because I just love the variety of the shaping on it. Like it's perfect for doing these kinds of effects, especially with the cape here where we can get some like really strong cavity effects on the inside there. So for the sake of teaching, this is a really good object. But anyway, here comes the cool part about being a tools developer is when stuff just works. So I have the object selected here. I'm going to go into the rendered view. I specifically have this effect set up to use the weight version rather than the color version of the mask. If I apply it to selected, it might take a while to calculate because it's a complex object. So there's a lot of vertices to bake onto, but hopefully no crash, please. And it's done, but you can see the overlay is quite complex. Let's get rid of that. So here we go. We've just now generated a dirt layer based on the ambient occlusion data of this object, and it's all completely physical. So we can look around and see how this has been generated around the shape of the object. And again, because there's like a strong proximity effect going on where that cape is coming down, it's all very covered under there, under that arm, that side of the body. And also this side of the face here on the right side, because that's coming close to other geometry as well. So you can see that the procedure works. It can be automated and it can be used for cool effects. And if we wanted, we can take this further as well because this is all physical geometry. If I wanted, I could apply my ambient grunge node to the actual statue to give that more complex material. And that shader data will react with what we've just generated. So maybe I'll do that. I already have my node here ready in the statue material. So if I plug that color in to the principal BS SDF. And then let's turn down the cleanup values, turn up the level, turn that down a bit more. So I'm just balancing these values to get it right. And then maybe apply the normal data as well. And I'm going to turn down the scale slightly as well to try and break up some of that obvious repetition. And let's also finally turn the brightness of the statue up a bit as well, just to make it a bit more obvious to see the pattern that's going on. So now we have an example of a completely procedurally dirtified object. Now, when I say procedural, obviously the ambient occlusion was baked and the grass blades and like stone pieces, they come from collections, which are pre-made objects. So I suppose the appropriate term isn't necessarily procedural, even though parts of it are, it's probably more parametric. Then again, there's a whole debate about where to use those terms. Technically, everything's procedural, even extruding a face is procedural. But anyway, this is a combination of geometry nodes and shader nodes making use of the same data sets. And just to demonstrate this, maybe I will make a cube and bring that up next to the statue here. And you'll see that now where that cube is coming close to the statue, if I turn on my overlays, you're now getting this extra dirt being generated around the arm there. So again, this is a very procedural part of the shader. So hopefully you have found this interesting to see how you can take these ambient occlusion data sets from different parts of Blender and combine them. So we have the geometry nodes version and the shader nodes version. So yeah, now I wanted to make this video because I saw that there were some people on Twitter that wanted to know how to do something like this because I think this is quite an in-demand feature. But as we said throughout the video, there are just a few things to keep in mind. So like the color layer and the weight layer, they are two different data types. So it depends what you want to go for. Also, if you are trying to rebake a map, so say if you weren't happy with the result that you got and you wanted to rebake the color version, make sure your geometry nodes trees are disabled in the modifier stack. So turn off all the visibilities. If you don't disable them, then you will get a black bake result, which isn't very useful. So yes, hopefully you found this interesting. Um, you might also notice some new features here. So I've actually made a shortcut for doing that auto baking in Bygen. This is not available to the public yet. You know, I guess I've just started working on version 10. And again, this content pack for like this physical grunge is not available. I'm not actually sure whether I'll do that as a separate content pack or whether I'll do it as part of the ambient grunge node package. We'll have to wait and see. So for now, it just belongs to me. Muhahaha. I've made all these tools and you can't have them. But anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. If you made it this far, then the emoji for this video is going to be a tree. Um, I would have gone for like mud or something, but I don't think mud is an emoji and I don't think like regular grasses, there are different plants, but I know that there's trees. Anyway, just put a tree in the comments so I can see who made it this far and they'll let me know who the real OG viewers are. Of course, like I said, you can get access to the file I showed you earlier on, that demonstration file on my Patreon, second tier members and above. That will also help to support me with my work across like the entire field. So the add-on development stuff, the YouTube videos, discussion videos, artwork, like everything. You can also check out my resources on my website, codisholt.online slash store. And you'll find like a bunch of free and paid stuff on there, which you can use for your own artwork. There's like a large variety of stuff on there now, especially with that community material pack, but there's so much more I want to make. Oh yeah, and about the Patreon, if you sign up, you can get your name put permanently on this piece of artwork. It's an evolving piece of artwork called the Hall of Patrons. And basically, even if you stop supporting, your name will still be on there. So it's going to like carry on forward. 
forward. And I want to give big thanks to everyone that's subscribed in like the last month. Thank you, you have been a massive help. And it also helps to justify like putting more experiments and files on the actual Patreon page. So thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and I will see you next time.